Howdy folks, welcome back to My World of Tanks Replays with our Mighty Jingles and today as you can see we're in the garage with the KV-1, the Russian Tier 5 heavy tank. Um, I had a KV uh, a while back but after patch 7.3 I got rid of it um, and the reason was because prior to patch 7.3 when the Russian heavy tank lines uh, were reorganised the KV was, well it was pretty overpowered. Um, it had the big old fridge turret, it had the 152mm derp gun, it had the 107mm zis gun, um, uh, it was really slow, very well armoured, and practically unkillable on the tier 5 battlefield. Now patch 7.3 changed a lot of things. If you look at the tech tree that we all know and love now, well, these two heavy tank lines didn't exist. Back then the KV, and it was just called the KV, not the KV-1, was the tier 5 heavy. KV-3 was tier 6 heavy, K the IS was the tier 7, IS-3 at tier 8, the IS-4 was a tier 9 heavy tank, and the IS-7 was the tier 10. Well, obviously a lot's changed since then. Bad news for the KV-1 was that while it stayed at tier 5, the KV-2 received its 152mm uh, gun and big turret, the T-150 received its 107mm gun, and this new 85mm gun was invented for it, and it was given a clone of the 57mm this 4 gun on the T-34 uh, over here, tier, tier 5 medium tank. Um, and that left the old KV-1, as it now became known, feeling pretty damn sorry for itself. And that was largely because... Um, prior to patch 7.5, the matchmaker still put this thing in tier 9 games. Um, and this thing has severe trouble even in a tier 8 game. However, patch 7.5 is upon us. The new matchmaker means this thing doesn't get into anything higher than tier 7. And it manages to look after itself in that sort of environment. And of course, uh, we just had a special event on the EU server where this, the KV-1S, and the T-150 are all available for half price, so I've taken advantage of that to uh, revisit some of the Russian Tier 5 and 6 heavies that I sold just after patch 7.3. So, how does it look? Well, it's got a decent amount of health for soaking up uh, damage at Tier 5, 640 hit points. It is a pretty heavy tank. Um, mine weighs just over 48 tonnes, and it only has a 500 horsepower engine, so that 34 km per hour speed limit is... Well, you know, it can hit that 34 kilometers, and it will hit that 34 kilometers per hour, um, but going downhill only. Um, but it doesn't have to go down a very, very steep incline in order to reach that speed pretty quickly. The only problem is that when you level out on the flat again, it slows down to 24 to 28 kilometers per hour. That's that's your real effective top speed on this thing, and it doesn't like going up hills at all. Not without 500 horsepower engine. Um, it depending on the gradient of the hill, you're going to find yourself going uphill at single figure speeds in this thing. Now, the lack of mobility continues with the whole traverse, 20 degrees per second. It doesn't turn very quickly at all, and it likes to slow down practically to a stop when you turn corners on it. The turret traverse is pretty bad as well, 24 degrees per second. Uh, you will have significant problems in this tank if somebody manages to get, especially if they're small and quick, if they manage to get around your sides and rear. Um, French light tanks, tier 5 scouts, even some of the, f I mean even T-34, uh, tier 5 medium tanks, love catching KV-1s and just doing the circle of death around them because they cannot bring that gun around fast enough to track and kill a fast moving small target. That's just the, the biggest weakness of the tank. Um, the view range isn't bad, 310 meters, and there's nothing special about that. It, more than 300 is okay, and it is just more than 300. The signal range is poor. Um, it's that 10RK radio again. It's the bane of the Russian mid-tier tanks. It is an absolutely appallingly bad radio. Unfortunately, you're stuck with it. It's the best you've got. Um, yeah, there you go. Now, armor-wise, this is a very tough tank. Um, surprisingly tough. Uh, I'm, when I was playing this thing after patch 7.3, I, I sold it in disgust. And that's because a tier 8 tank gun can get through this thing like a hot knife through butter. Uh, and some of the tier 9 tank guns can not just penetrate you, they can one-shot kill you. Tier 7? Well, they're probably not going to have to aim for weak spots. <laughs> Um, but the tier 6 and certainly tier 5 and lower tanks have a real hard time penetrating this thing um, from the front. And that's because the whole armour is 75mm thick at the front and the side 
70 at the rear, the turret, well the second turret, is 110 millimeters all round. Now, that's not bad for a tier 7 tank. What am I talking about? That's not bad for a tier 5 tank. Well, no, that's not bad for a tier 7 tank. And it's a tier 5 tank. Um, in fact, you know, if you look at the IS, well, the IS has 10 millimeters more at the front, and this is a tier 7 heavy. The armor at the sides and rear of the turret is weaker than the armor of the KV-1's turret. So, yeah, you know, this is a very well-armored turret. Now, the front of the hull um, is very, very well sloped. And unlike on a lot of the German tanks, this lower glacis isn't a particular weak spot. Um, it's, it's, it's no, it doesn't, I don't think it's any thicker or any thinner than the rest of it. Um, and the angle that it's at, the reverse angle there, is more or less the same as the reverse angle of, of this upper section of the uh, upper glacis here. Um, and generally speaking, when you're shooting out the front, depending on the gun that you're using, when you're shooting out the front of a KV-1, I mean, this machine gun port is a weak spot, but this entire upper glacis section here is, is the easiest place to penetrate the thing. Um, and depending on the gun that you're using, obviously the lower glacis as well, but it all depends about the angling. The central part of the upper glacis, um, you're going to bounce off this like there's no tomorrow. Uh, and because it's the same 75mm thickness as everywhere else, but look at the angle on it. Now, the KV does not suffer from the same problems uh, with regards to the shot trap effect of the front of the upper glacis that the KV-1S and the IS does. And just to remind you of what that is, very, very well sloped upper glacis. Same on the IS, same on the T-150, same on the KV-1S. But shots that come in, smack that, bounce off, have an, an, an alarming habit of going in through the bottom of the nose of the turret on the way up, which damages the tank, knocks the gun out, kills the gunner, all sorts of nasty stuff. And that's a problem on the IS, it's a problem on the KV-1S, it's, not, it's a problem but to a lesser degree on the T-150, but it isn't really a problem at all on the KV-1. That's because the turret is smaller and it isn't set as far forward. So shots can still come in, smack that, bounce off and go nowhere. Y you rarely find the turret being penetrated by shots ricocheting off the front of the, gla of the glacis. So that's a good thing. Um, what you're going to find if you're driving a KV-1 is that turret is so, so tough to crack that none of the guns on the KV-1 itself can penetrate the turret of another KV-1 with any kind of regularity. Uh, that's just how tough that turret is. Uh, speaking of the guns, well, let's look at the tech tree. Now, there are a choice of three guns on the KV-1. The 57mm 413, which, to into all intents and purposes, is just the 57mm gun from the T-34. The 120mm U-11, which is a derp gun. <coughs> if you like howitzers, well, you know exactly what you're getting into. And this 85mm F-30, which you can't unlock until you've un unlocked the second turret. Now... The KV-1 is kind of weird because the where it sits in the tech tree, it leads to three different heavy heavy tanks. The T-150 leads to the IS-4, the KV-1S leads to the IS-7, and the KV-2 leads back to the T-150, <laughs> and then down towards the IS-4 again. <coughs> now, you need to unlock the tracks to get to the T-150, uh, you need to unlock both engines to get to the KV-1S, and you need to unlock the derp gun to get to the KV-2. Um, in order to grind out the XP for any of those, because none of these modules are available on any of the tanks that you will have researched, unless you've gone down the Russian medium tank line, you may have the U-11 derp gun, but otherwise none of these are going to be unlocked. You're going to have to do it with this 76mm ZIS-5, and it is utter rubbish. <coughs> this is a tier 5 heavy tank gun that only has 86mm of penetration. Um, it's an appallingly bad gun. It's woefully inaccurate. The aiming time is pretty crap. Everything about it sucks. Unfortunately, you're going to have to grind out at least 3,750 XP for that if you want to go to the KV-2. You're going to have to grind out 850 there, 5,100 there to get to the KV-1S, and you're going to have to grind out 2,325 for the suspension to get to the T-150. So please don't do it with that gun. Unlock one of these, or even that. Now, the 57mm is a fine choice of gun for this tank. 
it's kind of a weird play style though because basically you're a heavy tank with a tier 5 medium tank gun um, it's a machine gun uh, it's just like the 57mm ZIS-4 on the T-34 in fact it is the 57mm ZIS-4 on the T-34 and this is pretty cynical of Wargaming because it is exactly the same gun but they've given it a different name they call this one the 413 but that is the only difference between this and the ZIS-4 um, and you basically, even if you already have the ZIS-4 unlocked on the T-34, it doesn't matter. They, they're pretending this is a different gun. They're making you unlock it twice if you want to use it on the KV-1. You know, it is what it is. But it ain't a bad gun. Rate of fire, 26 rounds per minute. 112mm of penetration, which is fine. Damage is on the low side, but it doesn't really matter with that rate of fire. It's pretty accurate. And the aiming time isn't great. But, you know, that pretty much only really applies on the first shot but this gun does fire so quickly that unless you have uh, a gun laying drive uh, to cut down on your aiming time you're going to find uh, and this may not be an issue depending on the range that you're shooting but you're going to find that it reloads the next shot faster than it aims um, and if you're at close range it doesn't matter just fire as fast as the gun loads but if you're shooting at something at long range and it certainly is accurate enough with 0.34 accuracy to do that you must wait and let it aim before you pull the trigger because it will load faster than it aims um, but you know it's not a bad gun I've played a couple of games with it um, it works it's just different now, if you like your dirt guns, then I don't really need to say any more about this. The 122mm U11, it's a howitzer, it's a dirt gun. Crap penetration, loads of damage, lousy accuracy, horrible aiming time, horrific rate of fire. You know, dirt guns are dirt guns. That's what it is. If you want, if you like dirt guns, then by all means stick this on, go and do your derpy thing. And if you want to get to the KV2, you're going to have to unlock it anyway. But I would recommend you go for the second turret, purely because it's so much better armoured than the first turret and it leads to the 85mm gun and this is what you see on most KV-1s and it's not a bad gun um, the rate of fire is obviously much much slower than 57mm um, it's less than half the rate of fire but the penetration is better not much better 120mm the, the damage output is double uh, what you have on the 57mm 160 damage it is much less accurate and it has a 3.4 second aiming time. So 0.42 accuracy is not good. Um, so your choice really boils down to, uh, I mean, if you're gonna use the derp gun, then great, you're gonna use the derp gun. But if you don't like derp guns, well, 57 millimeter, 85 millimeter. Neither of them are great guns, but they both get the job done. And it's just a question of whether you wanna be using a machine gun or, you know, a proper, if you like the, the word, <laughs> probably not the right word to use but you know a, a more traditional tank gun so that's the tank equipment well um, I don't know if I'm going to be keeping my KV-1 I'm probably going to sell it so I can buy KV-3 do a review of that I, I, I don't know uh, it's a bit of a shame because this is my old KV crew and the crew skills are pretty good <laughs> um, but I might just stick them back in the garage and uh, I don't know um, so basically what I'm saying is I'm not spending a lot of money on this tank now, you definitely need, uh, and if you're going to keep this thing, and you know, it, does, it is a good tier 5 money maker, so, you know, there's, there's certainly plenty of reason to keep this tank. But if you're going to spend money on it, uh, and have it earn money for you, then you are going to want a medium caliber tank gun rammer. Um, actually, there's the 85mm, just so you can see the difference. Uh, yeah, you're going to want a medium caliber tank gun rammer. You're going to want an enhanced gun lane drive because the aiming time for both of the guns isn't pretty good. And I would probably go for improved ventilation um, because of the reload. And well, but certainly on the 85mm, definitely want the improved ventilation. But even if you're using the 57mm, it all helps with the aiming time. You know, uh, and not just you know, the, all sorts of crew skills. The driver accelerates faster, etc., etc. Everything's just better. So that would be my choice. Speaking of crew skills, well. Um, 310 meter view range is all right, but it could be a lot better. So I've gone with recon on my commander. Snapshot on the gunner, um, purely because the accuracy isn't that great. Um, snapshot is a very, very good idea if you're using the 57 millimeter gun. It's not a bad idea if you're using the 85, um, just because with the 57 mil, 
because it fires so quickly it's all about sustained damage per minute and you tend to find yourself sitting with your hull angled um, and peppering away at the target moving the turret as you're firing at the target um, and it is more accurate than the 85 and snapshot will help you more with that sort of thing with the 85 millimeter you tend to adopt a different play style more heavy tank ish um, where you'll pock behind cover and then you'll pop out aim take your shot pop back in um, and snapshot isn't a terrible skill if you're using the 85 mil but it, i find you get more use out of it if you're using the 57 millimeter um, clutch braking practically mandatory for the driver um, 20 degrees traverse speed just uh, horrible anything that proves that is good again more view range situational awareness on the radio operator just to boost that up beyond the 310 i mean 310 is all right but hey we want more than that and then the loader i've gone with repairs uh, because i always like to have repairs on at least one of my heavy tank crews so that's the tank uh, that's how i've outfitted it that's how i would outfit it if i was prepared to spend any money on it for uh, the modules um, let's see how it plays. So here we are, uh, we're on Muravanka. It's an encounter map. We start on the south side, um, and it's a tier 7 game. Now this is the worst possible matchmaking you're ever going to see in your KV-1. But it's far better than the worst possible matchmaking you were ever going to see in the KV-1 prior to patch 7.5. I mean, these could have been E75s and IS8s uh, that we were having to duke it out with. So, you know, a two-tier spread is, it, you know, it's fine. Having to take down Tigers and KV3s. Well, KV3s are always tough because they're so well armoured, but, you know, it, then certainly not unkillable. So here we go. And it's not a promising start. <laughs> We've just lost a Wolverine and a Panzer IV. Here we go. And I'm just waiting for that Panzer IV to pop his nose up. <laughs> and then somebody else kills him. So the only other thing we can see at this point is KB1S. Oh, there they are. They're all popping up. Can I get a shot? Oh, that's a very, very dodgy shot. And somebody else kills him. Now you're going to find this a lot with this 85mm gun because of the it's not so much i find it's a bigger problem on the t-150 um, where you're aiming you're aiming and somebody else kills your target so you trundle forward you turn your turret you turn your turret you aim you aim somebody else kills your target and, uh, and it is an issue on the kv1 um but you know it's certainly manageable now, i haven't even fired a shot yet and it scores a full four But, you know, that's something common to all the slow, big, heavy tanks. And here we go. Now, KV-3, Panzer IV, there's another KV-1 over there. And yeah, alright, I haven't actually gotten to fire a shot yet, but nobody's been shooting at me either. So, aha, what was that? Okay, and that was a KV-1 over here. But there's a couple, there he is. Right seem to be clear. I'm going to have to keep an eye on those T-34, 85s and KV-3s over there. I'm trying to... Where is, he? Where, is he? Where is he? There he is. Oh, missed. And there's a bounce. That's a T-34, 85. And he appears to have the 85mm gun. Now, just look at the amount of... of pull the back. You can see I'm not just a, relying on the armour keeping it angled. There's a good hit on the KV-1. And another good hit on the KV-1. And he's on fire. Let's make sure and finish it off. Now, KV-3 and a T-3485 shooting that way. The T-3485 is well angled as well. But he only has 45mm of armour. There's two kills. Now uh, that KV-3, luckily, is not fully upgraded. And you can see the bounce marks. That went through the side of his gun mantle, but if you look, you'll see his upper glaciers. You can see they're just ricocheting right off there. And I'm trying to put them around the side of his, of his gun mantle. 
lower glaciers. Yeah, and that's the accuracy of this thing. It really isn't quite good enough. However, look at that. Not a single shot penetrated. Took a bit of track damage, and that's it. And that periscope. Yeah, there is a penetrating hit there. Didn't do any actual damage to the tank. So we are winning this one quite comfortably. Can I finish off that SUA? Oh, where's he gone? Oh, somebody's just killed him. Okay. Now all we have left is two artillery who are taking pot shots at me and a Wolverine. Here's that aiming time. Yeah, rush the shot. Desperate to get the kill. But can I finish him off? No, I can. And that's the first piece of damage I've actually taken. I have my tracks blown off and taken 23 minor damage from an AMX 105 AM. And you really don't have to fear tier 4 or below artillery in this thing. The amount of games where I was desperately a good hit. In my SU-26, my, uh, my SU... Oh, I can't remember. The Tier 4 Russian artillery, SU-5 or SU-8. Desperately trying to kill these things. And you can hit them. <laughs> you can definitely hit them. But you'll do about between 10 and 25 damage per shot. Um, if you're lucky, you might knock out some modules, kill some crew members. But that's the worst you're going to do to these tanks. Tier 3 and 4 artillery just really doesn't have the firepower, unless they're very, very lucky and they get a shot lands right on the weak spot, the top of your engine deck at the back behind the turret there. Uh, and even then, it, it's not guaranteed to go through. Tier 5 artillery, Hummels, S 51s, oof, they'll give you problems. Oh, seriously, zero damage penetrating hit on a Tier 4 artillery. <laughs> So, well, yeah, that wasn't bad at all. Um, that's a 1300 XP game, and this tank makes money. 32,000 credits. That's not bad at all. Uh, and that was a, a, you know, it was a reasonably good game. I mean, some good kills there. Tier 6, Tier 5, Tier 4, Tier 5. Damaged. I mean, he's Tier 7, for Christ's sake. And, you know, we put a few good holes into that KV-3. So this is not a bad little tank. And Boss, but this just does not compute. We got a sniper award with that 85mm gun and it's 0.4 whatever accuracy. Well, which just goes to prove that despite the lousy accuracy, if you just give the sights time to settle, you will hit targets with this gun. Um, the only problem is, of course, that it does take so long and you are exposed to return fire while you're waiting for it to aim. Um, and while the KV does have good armour for its tier, you can just make life so much easier for yourself by well, just angle your hull. That 75mm of armour becomes 100mm of armour if you angle it properly. Um, and you can see the upper glacis there, very, very bouncy. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't bad. Let's have a look at another one. So, here we are on Sand River. Uh, once again, I'm platooned up with Dan in his Candy Strike KV-1 and Covey in his regular KV-1. Uh, he's using the 85mm, myself and Dan are using the 57mm gun, which to all intents and purposes is the same gun as on the T-34. And, you know, it is a surprisingly effective gun. It doesn't seem like it would be. Um, it's, it's definitely a medium tank gun. But, I mean, the 85mm isn't really a heavy tank gun. Um, and both guns do work quite well. So, here's a game with the 57mm. And you'll see what I mean. You know, it's just a different playstyle. Uh, what it does mean, however, is that because it relies on the high rate of fire, you have to sit there exposed to return fire for longer than you do with the 85 mm um, And that means you really need to be angling your hull just to maximise the protection that this pretty good armour does actually offer. And so we'll see what happens when you get into a gunfight with another KV-1 with a 57mm gun when I angle my hull and he doesn't. And here they come. Tier 2 and 3 artillery in this game. 
I'm not worried about tier 2 and 3 artillery in this tank. They just don't have the penetration to damage you with their high explosive shots. You might get unlucky and lose a crew member, but that's about the worst that you can expect. So, here we come, and we're angling. And targets everywhere. T1 heavy gets in the way. And I am taking return fire from somebody. And I believe that it's the other KV-1. Because the amount of damage he's doing, it looks like he's using the 57mm gun as well. Now, watch. See the green targeting cursor. Okay, wait for it. Just note, when the targeting reticle moves over the front of the hull of this KV-1, just note at which areas it turns orange to indicate that you might not penetrate, and which areas it turns green. There he is. That one didn't go through. There you see. And that's him dead. And we're bouncing shots from all directions, and that's because we, you know, we're, we're angling the hole. And the turret is 110 mil thick in the front. Well, the turret's 110 mil thick all around. So that KV-1 up there is not feeling very uh, confident at this point in time. Not with three of us charging him. He's already down at 55%. So I'm going to leave him to Dan and Cody, and I'm going up after that B-1. That's how I kept myself at the optimum angle until he was out of line of sight, and then I turned. Turret ring has taken some damage here, um, so that's going to be an issue. The turret turns very slowly on this thing anyway, but the damaged turret ring, it's, it's, it's almost German it turns that slowly. But this B1 is dead meat. And he's only a tier 4 heavy, poor guy. Uh, to be completely honest, I'm not even certain the guy is AFK, considering he's sat here in the entire game, but oh, it turns out he is actually at keyboard, he's just crap. And he bounces, and he bounces, I don't, and I don't, and I don't, and he bounces, <laughs> and I kill him. 57mm isn't a bad gun at all. And I'm determined to get this artillery, but, uh, Kobe, dirty kill-stealing bastard. That's normally Dan's job. And now, you know, oh, hello, there's that KV-1. I'll have him. There's no way he's turning his turret fast enough to deal with this. And armor absorbs another hit. And that, that, I don't know what it is about this 57mm gun. I mean, you get a surprising number of hits on the move with it. And you can generally risk it with this gun and you, that you can't really do with the 100, um, 100 with the 85mm. Because it loads in less than three seconds. Why not fire on the move? And of course if you're using the 85, the loading and aiming time is so much slower than this thing that you really don't want to risk missing when you might need to hit with your next shot. So it's just two different playstyles, and as you can see, um, you know, that was pretty successful as well. 1120 XP and another 30,000 credits. Um, and we can do a massive amount in that game. Uh, three kills. Uh, T1 Heavy, KV-1, a B-1, and damaged another KV-1 and a Panzer IV. Um, but we took ten hits. Only two of them did damage, and that's minor damage. Um, very, very well armoured tank. If you just angle the hull, it becomes an extremely well armoured tank. Uh, I mean, it's not going to save you from a Tier 7 heavy tank gun, but it might save you from a Tier 5 heavy tank gun. Uh, Sorry, it might save you from a tier 6 heavy tank gun, and it's almost certainly going to save you from a tier 5 heavy tank gun. I mean, it does have good armour, but it isn't great armour. You can make it great armour just by angling the hull a little, and this applies to so many tanks, but you see too, so, you know, so few people doing it. And that first KV-1 that we killed was just sitting there pointing straight at me. And yeah, he had 75mm of armour at the front, uh, but this gun has 112mm of penetration. Which means that it's going to penetrate flat on most of the time. 
but he could have made it so much harder for me to penetrate, as, as I did for, for his return fire, that I don't think any of them actually got through, just by turning the tank 30 degrees to the left or the right, and you just make it so much harder for the enemy guns to get through you. And, and I mean, I, I, I shouldn't complain that so few people do it. I wouldn't get as many kills as I do if other people did it. So, you know, feel free to present the front of your tank to me at a flat angle if you ever see me on the enemy team. But, um, you know, it's just such a simple thing to do, and it just drastically increases your chances of surviving a battle. And the longer you survive, the more damage you can do. The more damage you do, the more credits and experience you get. So, well, you know, that was the KV-1, uh, using both the 85mm gun, which is fine. I mean, or the 57mm gun, which is also fine. Neither of them are great guns, um, but they get the job done. Uh, and whichever one you use, it, it, it just really comes down to personal style and preference. Um, I have a, plenty of fun with both of them. I think I probably prefer the 85mm, but in some situations the 57mm is more flexible. And it just depends what you like. So uh, that was the KV-1, Russian Tier 5 heavy tank, um, in a couple of maps and a couple of different situations with different guns. I uh, hope you enjoyed the replays, maybe you learned something, and I'll catch you next time.